The non-conformity of an action or a mission with an international obligation is the objective element of any internationally wrongful act. In addition to such non-conformity, the wrongful act must be attributable to a state or to an international organization for the international responsibility of any of those legal subjects to exist. Attribution is the subjective element of the internationally wrongful act. Attribution is a legal operation. Attribution is the operation by which the behavior of human beings in the real world is legally deemed to be the conduct of a subject of international law, that is, a state or an international organization. States and international organizations are indeed abstract legal entities, like corporations in domestic law. States and organizations do not physically act by themselves, but they act through human beings whose behavior is then legally attributed, imputed to the abstract legal entity. Of course, when the internationally wrongful act is an omission, the absence of any action instead of a positive act, it will be sufficient to identify the international subject who was under the obligation to take a specific action, action and failed uh, to do so. I in such a case, attribution as a legal operation will not really take place and will be reduced to taking note of a wrongful failure to act by the subject owing the obligation. International responsibility will be established by identifying the character of the obligation as an obligation to do something, to act, and the failure to act by the subject owing the obligation without really addressing the attribution of such wrongful failure. Attribution will be somehow implied and automatic. Let us turn now to the rules on attribution, knowing that they are really at play when actual conducts, rather than omissions, occurred. The rules on attribution are customary rules of international law that are part of the secondary rules on responsibility codified by the International Law Commission. A careful study of the rules on attribution is not only needed in order to understand what attribution is about, but it also helps us to understand more concretely what states or international organizations are. Let us concentrate on attribution to states, knowing that the rules on attribution to international organizations are not very much different. The basic rule on attribution is very easy to understand. A state is responsible for the conduct of, it, of any of its organs. Article 4 of the Articles on State Responsibility for Internationally uh, Wrongful Act recalls that, I quote, an organ includes any person or entity which has that status in accordance with the internal law of the state, end of quote, and that it does not matter, I quote again, whether the organ exercises legislative, executive, judicial or any other functions. End of quote. In other words, states are internationally responsible for the conduct of their governments, but also for the conduct of their legislature or of their courts and tribunals, despite the constitutional independence of the latter. For instance, in 2012, in a case between Germany and Italy that we will address later in the course, the International Court of Justice found the Italian Republic internationally responsible for judgments of the Corte di Cassazione. Moreover, under Article 4 of the Articles on State Responsibility, it does not matter whether the organ of the state is a high-ranking official, a minister, for instance, or a low-ranking civil servant, or whether it is part of the central government of the state, or of a decentralized entity, or even a municipality. The state can be held responsible for the conduct of any of its organs, instrumentalities or officials which form part of its organization, whether or not they have a separate legal personality under internal law.
The basic rule on attribution of the conduct of state organs helps us to understand that as a subject of international law, the state is one single entity and it presents itself as a unity for the purpose of international responsibility. It is important to stress that when the state organ is a physical person, the state is responsible for his or her conduct provided that he or she acted in his or her capacity as organ in the particular instance. The condition is not expressed by Article 4, but it is subsumed in the notion of organ and it must be kept in mind. A civil servant is not organ of the state 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Sometimes the civil servant is off duty or on holidays. It does not act then as an organ of the state, but as an individual, and his or her action is therefore not attributable to the state. States are also responsible for the conduct of persons or entities which are not their organs, but which are empowered under domestic law to exercise elements of governmental authority, provided again that such persons or entities act in such a capacity in the particular instance. And this rule of attribution is provided for under Article 5 of the Articles on State Respons Responsibility and it is intended to cover the situation of parastatal entities or of private companies entrusted with governmental tasks. For instance, private security firms contracted to act as prison guards or as immigration officials. Also, when one state lends some of its organs to another state, the conduct of the foreign organs is attributed to the state at whose disposal they have been placed, provided they effectively acted in the exercise of the elements of the governmental authority of the latter states. And this is Article 6 of Arsiwa. Before addressing the international responsibility of states for private acts, let me conclude this video by taking stock of the rules recalled in Article 7 of the Articles on State Responsibility. I quote, The conduct of an organ of a state or of a person or entity empowered to exercise elements of the government, uh, governmental authority shall be considered an act of the state under international law if the organ, person or entity acts in that capacity, even if it exceeds its authority or contravenes to instructions." End of quote. In other words, the state may not escape its responsibility by claiming that its organ or the person or entity empowered to exercise some of its authority has acted ultra vires, that is, in excess of its authority or in violation of specific instructions. For instance, if a police officer tortures a foreign inmate despite clear instruction to the contrary, such wrongful act remains legally attributable, uh, attributed to the state. Unauthorized acts and misconducts by state officials are and remain act of the state, even if higher organs have disowned the wrongful conduct. Any other solution would contradict the basic principle recalled in Article 3, according to which a state may not rely on its internal law in order to avoid being found responsible. But again, even if acting in an unauthorized way, it remains of paramount importance that the organ, person or entity acted in an official capacity with apparent authority rather than in a purely private capacity. There is, however, one exception to the requirement that the organ of the state acts in such capacity in the particular instance of the wrongful act. And that exception is not to be found in the ILC articles on state responsibility. It relates to the members of the armed forces of a state when the state is engaged in an international armed conflict. In such a situation, the state is of course responsible for any misconduct of its soldiers acting as soldiers, even when they have contravened to their instructions. But the state is also responsible for any wrongful conduct of the members of its armed forces irrespective of the fact that those members acted in their capacity as organs of the state or not. In time of war, in other words, 
The state is thus responsible for private acts of its soldiers when they are off duty, enjoying a military leave. For instance, in time of war, the state is responsible for the conduct of off-duty soldiers dressed as civilians who go to bars, have too many drinks and end up killing the local bartender in a fight. This specific rule is provided for under Article 3 of the Hague Rules of 1907 and it is repeated in Article 91 of the First Protocol of 1977, additional to the 1949 Geneva Conventions on the laws of war. This specific rule has been established in order for states to keep the discipline within their armed forces and to protect foreign citizens.